Stanley Black. Can't wait, boy. Very, very happy that you're here. Thank you for inviting me. So I like starting with really easy questions. I think everybody here would like to know how to own 18 million square feet of property. So <laughs> please let us know. Steal it. Steal it. <laughs> I started, in a, I've been in the business, I'm 21 years old, and I started building buildings and accumulating buildings since I'm 21. And over the years, uh, you know, we buy good properties, and uh, I started with office buildings, and then uh, we sold our office buildings and went into net-net, uh, leaseback uh, properties, and I have them maybe in 35 different cities throughout the United States. And we started slow, honest, deal, dealt with a lot of people. Um, and, uh, you, and then real estate, you make your money on the buy. And over the years, I found that they made some, good, made some bad buys, but mostly good buys. And that's how I accumulated all the property. So going back to when you're 18, before you started buying property, your dad is in real estate and he taught you everything and gave you five million no. bucks to start? No, no. <laughs> no, my dad was in the textile business. Okay. And we had a, a place downtown. He was a, a jobber. He would sell tailors, manufacturers. And I was raised in that business as a kid. Not at 18, at, at 10 years old he took me down. Mm -hmm. And I worked with him and I would go with him on Saturdays and uh, holidays. And, uh, and he got me really how to, how to deal with people. And, uh, and he did real estate. He did mostly for real estate investment for his own, his own self, invested his money in real estate. And I would go out with him and we'd look at properties and, uh, and I would look for ads in the LA Times and find things and show it to him. And that's how I really got started. So a lot of kids today at 10, 12, 14 who are taken into the business develop a very anti-business mentality. What did your dad do differently that made you want to do business instead of be scared of doing business? No, he taught me. I worked. I worked down for the shipping department and uh, uh, selling. And uh, that guy gets surprised, by the way. <laughs> selling, uh, selling, and meeting people, and uh, you know, I would go on buying trips. And he taught me from the bottom up, and that's how I developed. Uh, how I got into. It wasn't how I got into real estate, but that's how I got a new business. So your first purchase, do you remember your first property? The first property, well, my father bought some property, some apartment houses on Hollywood Boulevard and uh, Robertson Boulevard. We brought a piece of property to build a building, and uh, he did. And, uh, and from there on, after that, I would buy properties. Uh, um, and when I started the business, I started. Do you, you want to hear how I started? Or? Sure. Well, I started. Uh, my father passed away. Uh, <clears throat> I was uh, 21 years old. And he uh, passed away. He had a hepatitis from a blood transfusion. And uh, we were in a family business, and I wanted to go into the business. But my uh, relatives, my uncles, they had a buy and sell agreement. They can buy out a partner. So they uh, elected to buy out my mother and my family. And I said, could I have uh, keep five, 10%? And they said, well, we'll give you a job, maybe someday. And uh, I wasn't interested in that. And uh, a friend of my father, George Conheim, who was a builder, Buckeye Construction in Beverly Hills, he said, come on in and you, you know, you come with us and you just go in the real estate business. And my father was an investor with them and they had some properties together. So that's how I got started. Was it fuel for your life that they said we don't want you in the business. Was that a motivating factor, or was that not a big deal for you? No, it was a big deal because I was raising the business, and I was uh, just getting. It was a Korean War on. I was in the Navy that time. I was just getting out, and I thought my future would be in the textile business. It bothered me a little, but I wasn't. I said, "Let's go uh, go f further on," and and I liked the real estate. And when George Conheim came to me and said, "Come on in the real estate, and we'll, we'll build some property," you're a, my father and him were partners in. And I was happy, I said, let's go, and that's what I did. So would you consider Mr. Conheim a mentor of yours? Yeah, he was a mentor in the real estate business. What, what's a mentor? He showed me, uh, you know, how to build office buildings, uh, how to lease buildings, how to finance buildings, uh, getting out in the public and looking for things. 
and he showed me. I used to go uh, knock on doors of real estate. I remember I went to Coldwell Banker. There was an office over on Wilshire Boulevard. I was about 21, 22 years old. And I walked into the office, and I wanted to see somebody. I go, punk, get out of here, you know. So he said, no, they said, come on in. And the fellow there, I remember his name was John Joyce. And he came up to me, uh, Mr. Black, yeah, come on my office. And he, uh, and we talked, I told him what I was looking for. And through that connection that he made, it, it teaches something. You can talk to anybody, be nice to people. Because I got him in with, I introduced him to George Conheim and, and then George had a partner, Bram Goldsmith, and they were the two partners. And they purchased many properties from this John Joyce. So it proves a point, be nice to everybody, you never know. Now, here's a guy that I come in, a young guy, and here's a, a man of a real estate guy comes in, Mr. Black, come on in. And he didn't know who I was. But it shows you, be nice to everybody. It taught me something you do, and he, he made a lot of money from that. John Joyce, making the contact. <laughs> and in real estate, it's really contact, who you know and what you do. So is that why you still have an open door policy in your office till today? Yeah, everyone can. My door's always open. Anyone comes to see me, uh, Rabbi, rabbi, a lot of rabbis come, but the charities, real estate brokers, real estate people, anyone that can come to my app can see me. And was that the thing that taught you that, or was that also Conheim's and your dad's philosophy as well? Well, that was their philosophy. That, uh, no, not with the John Joy that taught me. They taught me at Conheim. You, you, you meet people, you see people, and they, they help you, and you need people, even today. What's the biggest thing you learned from Conheim as your mentor? No, I mean, uh, well, looking for sites, or real estate sites, uh, being honest. Um, and he taught me the real estate. I mean, basically uh, building, uh, uh, leasing. I, I learned leasing, how to lease office space. Um, you know, he was good to me. Do you currently mentor people? Yeah, my, I got my son, my grandson, and my daughter, my different people. I mentor and help them, whatever I can. What's the biggest lesson you want to impart to them? That uh, be honest, help people, uh, be nice, and see people, and that's and do it, do what I. They see what I do. They may see a lot of people, and it works. And be, you know, if it's people in our business, it's a people business, and you need people to help you. Is and there any business that isn't a people business? I think every business is basically a people business. If you want to, do, if you want to do business. Uh, Entertainment, anything is a people business. So your grandson, God willing, will get have kids, and they'll have kids. What do you want your great, great, great grandkids to know about you? Well, know who I am. That we're charitable, help help people, <laughs> which we do, and I then teaching them, and they're uh, working on it. Uh, all my kids uh, were charities and do do good things, and good things happen. Why is charity important to you? Because my father taught me, he was very charitable and he uh, helped a lot of people and, and it taught me that you do good things, like I said, it's, it's going to help, but it, I do it because I feel it. If I can help somebody, anything, if they need money, they're broke or something, then I help them. And, you know, it, it just, or even when you walk on the street, you see a, a beggar, and a lot of times, you know, my wife, it hit me, but I said, no, I give him a dollar, give him something. He's out there, he's big, and you help him. And that's my philosophy. Do you do it because it gives you pleasure? Or do you have an obligation? No, I just feel that's the right thing to do. So it's not because of what it does for you, it's a fact of life of what is correct? What is the right thing to do, and you're helping somebody, and it's important. And that's just simply because you learned it from your dad? from my dad and, uh, and, and I have the inside me that tells you you got to do good things and I try. When did you start giving what's considered big money? I mean, what do you call big money? I mean, that's going to be my, <laughs> that's going to be my follow up question. You can answer both if you wish. No, I started giving a federation. I was involved a lot in the federation. <coughs> the, uh, Vista Del Mar, the home I worked under them, I helped them. Uh, Cedar Sign. I mean, maybe a lot of a lot of the different charities in town here. I giving money right away. They needed it. I wanted to help them. So, at what age were you when you started giving money? Oh, I started. I was 22, 23 years old. So even before you quote unquote made it. Yeah. No. I one time I remember I was at a UJ meeting and I uh, 
and I raised my hand. I gave 20, uh, 25 hours the UJ the Federation, the Builders Division. And that's my one of the first I started, and I always gave. I never turned them down. When was the first time you gave an amount that actually really hurt? It never hurt. I never got hurt. I mean, it's something I wanted to do. I never hurt. It was never a check that it was really hard to sign. The amount was just never, uh, because I wanted to give it, and uh, never, even if I had to go borrow the money, I'd give it. I, I never hurt. Never hurt. Never hurt. Do you still sign your own checks? Yeah, most of them. Going back to when you started, when you were just leaving the fabric business, Conheim's going into the business, and you're about to leave Conheim to start on your own. What did you think would be your biggest challenge? Oh, the biggest challenge to be a success. I mean, to do the best I could, and uh, and I want to. I mean, I want to go out, go out in the community, make a name for myself in the community, and and give charities and help like I uh, train, but uh, just get out and do things. Was there something specific that you were scared of, or you thought, God, that was going to be, that's going to be hard? Was it getting the money, finding the property? What was the big challenge in your mind when you first started? It was, the, the, nothing. I was never scared. I mean, I did it. I, I wasn't scared. I went out and took chances, and I, uh, I was a gambler, and I, uh, it, it never bothered me. I, I wanted to do it. Did you always knew you'd be a success? I felt I should be. I mean, uh, you know, there's a possibility I didn't, but I felt if I work hard enough and honest, uh, I'll be successful. Are you a goal setter? Like, I want to get to this amount or this number or this? <laughs> no, I never have a goal setting. So how do you know when to slow down or take a break? I, I mean, I'm the nature that I, I don't want to slow down. I, I enjoy what I'm doing. And uh, say slow down, I, I mean, I figure when they put me, I always say when they put me in the box and I'll slow down. <laughs> so what were your hours? And when you were building in your 30s and in your 40s, what kind of hours were you working at that time? Uh, anything, 8, 8, 30, 9 o'clock to start, and 4, 5 in the afternoon, 5 o'clock. And are you the type who consistently thinks about it at night and wakes up in the middle of the night thinking of the deals? Or once the deal is closed, no, you switch gears? I always thought about the deals, what I can do. Stressful or not stressful? No, not stressful. It wasn't stressful. I'm imagining there were some downs in the up and down of getting to where you are. Is oh, that yeah, there's always downs. and But basically, I always, always looking to go up, but I always went up. I never, I mean, there was downs. But uh, what you do, I saved it. I mean, I, uh, I, always, I, I never thought of it as a down. I want to go up, and I always went up. So even when you were in the down, you were looking up? Always looking up. And who taught you that? And my father taught me that. I mean, he taught me to be uh, good and uh, work hard, and it works. And I did work hard. Hmm. When did you feel like, I did it, I made it? Was there a time in your life that, obviously it wasn't when you were 21 starting out. No. When was that time? No, probably when I was 25, 28 years old. I figured, you know, we were going, then I was starting to build and do things. Uh, I was building a lot of office buildings in Hollywood and uh, had a partner and, and we were successful. It kept, it kept going and never stopped. What was the thing that made you feel like I did it? Was it a dollar amount in the bank, number of properties, an inner thing? What was the thing that made you go, I did it? No, I never thought of the money in a bank or the properties. I mean, I just want to be successful. And I felt I was successful and the money, I took the money and kept reinvesting it. What is success in your mind? I mean, having a success is having a, a building that I would build, it would lease, be all leased up. I would sell it and look at more and more buildings and or buy more properties. And, and I think, too, uh, health has a lot to do with it. I was always healthy, took care of myself. Um, watched my diet and exercise, and, you know, everything that's, uh, you know, that, that you need to do in life. <coughs> What's the most important thing you do for your business? Stanley, not the rest of the team. Stanley, what does he do that's the most important as a businessman? Oh, I mean, I mean that the building's leased, that we don't have to, you know, that the mortgage, we can take care of the mortgage payments. Um, and something else uh, that I learned from my father was, uh, he taught me that he said, always have the pink slip. You know, you own a car. So I try not to over mortgage. I never over finance try to pay off mortgages, and that was something that he bred in me. Even to this day, a lot of my properties, we don't have any mortgages on. 
but while you're building, when you're 30 years old. Well, you, you needed money. I had to get investors. <coughs> I had got, got investors invested, and I had banks I worked with, and we had some money to put in. I mean, uh, I mean, you, you, you have a deal, you worked it out, and I and I used to work it out. Uh, we financed it, and it, it worked. Something I learned a long time ago that said, if you have a million, you'll want two. Is it true when you get to 100? Well, no, if it went 100, you went 200, I mean, you know. So it always works. <laughs> it always works. I always went, kept going, I mean. Uh, uh, but I really am not a big spender. Uh, I give a lot of money to charities and do things, but not on my own. I live good, I have a nice home, and I have a nice car, but otherwise, uh, anything else, I don't go crazy. Are you happy? Yeah, I think so. Why are a lot of people who have a lot of money not happy, in your opinion? Stupid. What specifically? <laughs> you should be happy. <laughs> but why aren't they? Well, do you agree that many of your friends who have a lot of money aren't happy? No, I don't think, not, not that many that I know of, I mean, they're, Basically, they're happy. I mean, the ones that I have, that I have good friends that have money, they're basically happy. They should be. Our previous mentor, David Suisa, mentioned that when he was <laughs> making a lot of money, a lot of money brings a lot of noise, brings a lot of people who want your money. And <coughs> did you find that that happened? There's a lot of noise when you have a lot of money? No. The only thing noise I have is from the charities. They want me to give their charities, which I <laughs> want to do anyway. So uh, it was for me, it was a pr privilege to help other people. And I found out whatever you get, it all comes back to you for some way. What do you enjoy most about business? Buying, selling, managing, collecting? No, I like to buy. Uh, selling, we, uh, I try not to sell too much. I think it should keep. And uh, managing, I, uh, managing is, manage, I, not that I enjoy it, but I know that's part of the game, the managing. Uh, you have a very interesting Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Do you mind sharing? Your schedules of the weekends? <laughs> well, Friday we have a lunch and uh, uh, we meet at the cafe on the Cannon. We have lunches. Saturday we have, uh, we go to Nate Nows. We've got a group been going there for 30, 40 years. We go to Nate Nows. Then when after we meet another group at Bailey's. That's for coffee after Nate Nows. And it's all group and most of the people are in the real estate business and good friends of mine. And then in, uh, after that, we have lunch or spend the afternoon, whatever it is. And uh, on Sunday, wait, wait, Sunday we go to Canners. Uh, we meet every Sunday at 9 o'clock, a group at 25, 30. And then there's, we have people come and talk, like rabbis will come, uh, people, politicians now, all the politicians are running, they come and talk. Uh, and the different charities we help, they come on Sunday. And they group, we have a nice group on Sunday. What's the biggest thing you gain from that? It's friendship. I mean, everyone's equal. We're all equal people. I mean, we're not, no one's big shot there. Have more money than the other guy. You have to be equal, and just good friendship. You know, they meet. We meet around nine to about ten, ten thirty, and it's nice. And I've been doing it maybe for forty years. And you go every week. Every say, if I'm in town or <coughs> well, sure. A lot of business get done there. Yeah, some business here. Yeah. They introduce people, meet people there, want to sell somebody, or they want to buy something. I mean, a, a little business, it helps. Beautiful. Your office is full of pictures. You've probably met more people than I've met. <laughs> more people than most people have met, all the presidents, prime ministers. You want to share a story of somebody who inspired you from all of those meetings? I mean, the presidents or? Anyone who came up in the hundreds of people you well, met? Well, a lot of people there. I mean, if you go to, I should look at the office. Uh, like I saw Bobby Kennedy just before he got killed, and I, I, it was about a month or two. And, and then one of the pictures of a said Robert Kennedy Jr. came to my office one day. I said, he came, this was about a year ago. I said, you want to see your father? I took him to my office, so I took a picture of him. My grandson did, so I got Robert Kennedy, Robert Kennedy Jr. And then I have the presidents I got with uh, Clinton. We have uh, my son. Uh, we uh, went to a charity affair one day, and uh, uh, Clinton came down and was president. So my son went up to him, Mr. President, could I take a picture with you and my father? So we took it. And about next president, Bush was a president. I got pictures up there, Bush and I and my son. And it was a fundraiser again, and he says to Bush, could I take a picture with you and my father? Sure, we put his arm around us. So we got Clinton Bush. Now Obama's president. 
So he says to me one day, it's my son here, he said, can we get a picture of Obama? So I call a guy up and I said, uh, this campaign man, can we take a picture? Yeah, it's $35,000. Take a picture with Obama. <laughs> I said, are you crazy? <laughs> so what happened, uh, the, the senator, Barbara, uh, remember the, what's her name, the senator, our senator, she was running in San Francisco and Obama was going to meet her. So I called a friend of mine there, uh, Barbara Boxer was it, that can we come to that, can I take a picture of Obama? Yeah, and you give a nominal donation, fine, which I did. So my son and I went to San Francisco and we went in uh, and they put a ribbon on our coats and they came and got my son and I went in a room and Obama came in. And what was interesting about it, my son, he likes basketball. So he has his <laughs> cameras there and he's showing Obama 10 minutes or two of them. Here's the president of the United States and my son looking at basketball. <laughs> so, we <laughs> so we have a picture of uh, Obama and uh, that's the three and we have uh, the three presidents and uh, we got copies in our office, and anyone comes in, I give them the three presidents. And that's one of the, that's one of the things on the wall. But I have 100 pictures there. Uh, if you go through with different rabbis and vice presidents, and you have uh, not, not the Tanyu, that was from Israel, came over. Um, if I go with, I mean, and then I have a Seder of Obama in the, in the White House, he sent me, having a Seder which was nice. Uh, the other pictures I have of uh, Bush uh, Sr. I met once. I met him at a white PO convention and he, I took a picture with him. And we got mayor, I got the different mayors, I got, there must be a hundred pictures if I got, I should have made a list today for you. Who struck you is really amazing. When you met them, it was like, wow, that's a very special individual. You know, I met the other night, the president of Israel, just recently, and he was an interesting guy, I liked him. He, he was in town here about a month ago. I, have a, I took a picture of him. <laughs> uh, Romney, I like Romney. I got his picture up there. Um, in fact, I was, uh, they came to see me yesterday, and, I, and I, he, he's going to do something, Romney. I said, I don't, I don't know if he will. But at Canners, I want him to come on a Sunday morning with our group, and I'll get the LA Times. I said, you want to you get a lot of votes? Here's a way to get votes. <laughs> come to a Jew to have a, a delicatessen in Fairfax and you have a breakfast with Romney and show it. So I think he'll come. But um, a lot of things there, I don't know if I go through it. Uh, what would you say is your biggest victory? My biggest victory? Oh, my children, my children, my grandchildren. I got six grandchildren and that's a victory. Beautiful. Uh, there's a lot of questions from the crowd. Usually I don't open it up this quickly, but today I do because I know a lot of people have questions. So if you yeah. don't mind. Yeah, I'm here. Um, there's a request on the questions. Don't make a big introduction of the question. Just ask the question. And Mr. Black, if you don't mind on questions, repeat the question and then answer the question. Okay. Yeah, he wants me to tell about the Ray Kroc. Ray Kroc was a start at McDonald's. Uh, he, came, he came to Los Angeles when he first started McDonald's. And I met him and I had an office building in Hollywood and he rented space for me. But we got to be very close friends for some reason. In fact, he wanted after, he wanted me to build uh, the McDonald's, uh, the land where I uh, leased the land and build the building, the lease of the McDonald's. But my partner, he didn't know about McDonald's. He said, are you crazy to have hamburger stands? I went, I don't own a hamburger stand, McDonald's. <laughs> but I got to be friendly with him over the years and <clears throat> and one time I remember he owned the San Diego uh, baseball team mm -hmm. and a friend of mine wanted to go to the baseball game so how can I get in? So I called down to San Diego. He was in a meeting, got out of the meeting, got on the phone, Stan, what can I do for you? This friend of mine wants to come to see your game. No problem, what's his name? And he took care of it. He was a great, he was a good guy, this Ray Kroc. And, but I did not I did a little bit, I owned some McDonald's, but not what I sh should have, but it worked out. <laughs> <coughs> yeah. So he wants me to answer about the, I mean, are they American citizens? Or? Well, anywhere around the world. Well, there's some of the Israelis I like. Um, I like the president of France. You know who's running? Sarkozy. Sarkozy, yeah, I like him. <laughs> uh, I like the American, you know. I mean, whoever helps people. I mean, um, I met a lot of them over the years, different people. 
I like Romney, I like Romney, and I like Obama. I mean, I got nothing against. I know a lot of people don't like Obama, but I'm not against him. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, I, I knew Nixon, and, and I met Truman a few times over the years. I mean, they're gone. Um, today, I don't know. I, there's no one. Different governors. Uh, Reagan was a good friend of mine. I'll tell you a story about Reagan. Uh, Reagan was governor of the state of California, and I invited him to come to a, a, a shrine. I was president of the Westwood Shrine Club, and he was my guest. And he sat, he sat next to me, and I said, uh, uh, after he said, I said, Governor Regan, could you do me a favor? He said, what is it? I said, I like uh, motorcycles, uh, riders wear helmets. And I, my father-in-law was a doctor, and he told me the story where he, a lot of these kids hit their heads on the ground, their brains fall out, and they should wear helmets. You know, the next day he passed, he got helmets. And the, if you remember, they all picketed them. The, the motorcycle went to Sacramento, they picketed the Sacramento, they said, we, went away. we don't want helmets. But you, you figured out, this was about 25 years, no more, 30, 40 years ago. There have been 40, 50,000 people gone today if they didn't wear their helmets. It was important. And the next one is uh, Schwarzenegger. He did me a favor. Schwarzenegger is running the second time for governor, and, he, and they come to my office, and they ask me for money. They want to help him on his campaign. I say, I help him, but you got to do me a favor. What's that? A friend of mine, uh, Sidney Rosenberg, he was uh, president of American Building Maintenance. He got killed in Newport Beach. A girl was, had a cell phone and didn't see him and went to a signal and killed him. So I said, you got to have cell phones in the state of California. Next week, he did it. So that was two things of prominent people that did that, cell phones, helmets and other things you try to help throughout the life. But a lot of people, uh, you know, I could have made a list, I don't know. Have you thought about writing a book? I don't know. Uh, it went so, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Should we put it to a vote? No, I'm trying to pick now. It's, uh, uh, what's the name? It was just out of jail. The, uh, Jack Abramoff. Jack uh, his father's a close friend of mine. So I've been giving a lot of his books away, and uh, he's, he has an interesting life. And um, I don't know, maybe someday when I, you know, I have time. Don't have much time. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? Yes? Are you still actively investing in real estate? And if so, which asset types are you investing in? Well, I'm investing in real estate. I enjoy <laughs> real estate, and I look for deals. And uh, I like net-net deals, envelope type of deals, where they send a check in the mail, and that's all. I don't want the management and all that. And I look all over the country for deals, and I have people bring them to me, and I'm still, we're still buying. What do you think about the economy today? Well, we're having a little rough time at it. I mean, but we have some vacancies, but we're at least we're making deals, and I, and, and I know it exactly. I push them every day, get those buildings leased. Uh, basically, uh, of all the property, yeah, we have a less than five percent vacancy, which is pretty good, and we keep them rented. And but we have some problems, but it's uh, minimal. How long do you think till we get out of the recession? Or are we already out today? No, I don't think I'll, but I think there's going to be a lot of inflation in the next few years. And uh, things are going to go up. You see it already. If you notice, I know if you go to restaurants now, you see the prices have been higher. And it, there's inflation coming. I think there'll be a lot of inflation, but it's coming. When? I don't know. <laughs> While growing up and making all this money and doing all this business, did you enjoy the doing or the results better? Doing. <coughs> Even during the bad times? Yeah, doing, I enjoy working, doing things. Wonderful. Any other questions? <coughs> Any uh, uh, advice that uh, you had that guided you in times, uh, in trying times, that you could share with us? I know there was a time you did, you were, you were giving away the booklets of quotes that you write. I still give them away. Got them today. I give out the oh, books. Okay. I give out oh. the books and the fountain, the people see the fountain pens. If you open them up, it has a date in there. It has a date, uh, the month. And I give them, what well, these I give is people come to my office, I give them fountain pens, books, flashlights. They're all something of, it uh, says something, but it all has my name on it. I want them to have something with my name on it. And um, I mean, I don't know what else I can tell advice, you. Advice, 
what advice did you get that, that was very uh, uh, helpful to you, that guided you in, in maybe trying time? Well, I mean, be nice to people. People is important. The right, uh, you do business with the right people. Uh, being honest, um, giving money, charity. I do a lot of charity that helps. Uh, there's a rabbi here, there's a Schwartzy there, that uh, we support his uh, temple and all that. And many rabbis, many charities. I don't know, I just, just being good, I can say if you do good and you do good things, good things happen. Thank you very, very much for coming, Mr. Black. Thank you all for attending. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. And, uh, and I'll tell you about it. He, he, he comes to my office. He wants me to do something. This is about you, sir. <laughs> I want to say, no. <laughs> no. This is not. not no, not, he's not, just, not, no, no, I don't. No, let, let me say it. That's no, good. Can we at least turn off the video? No, leave it on. <laughs> no, what he does, Mr. he comes Mark. to my office. What's the name of your foundation? He gives me a check. That's my kind of guy. <laughs> he's smart. Well, how many other people have done that? None. <laughs> <laughs> That's the biggest kick. I was the first. So thank you for allowing us to be a partner. Thank you. Thank you.